Captain's Log, Stardate 192.168.1.20. We have been stranded on this planet for so long now that it doesn't even feel like we're stranded anymore. I am joined by my science officer, ZTech, and we stand, stand by the giant solar panels that we, uh, solar farm, sorry, how, how terrible misspeak of me, <laughs> that we, uh, that we created last, last time. Hey, 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 Z, how you doing? <laughs> well, Captain, I do have a question. Are you really stranded if you bring your home with you? I, I'm not a snail. This thing on my back is not my home. It is my temporary staying away equipment. Um, I, I, ha <laughs> I have a home off in Omicron Lyrie 7. What such a wonderful place to save us. That's a wonderful place. I, you know what I miss most about my home? Beautiful segue. What, Captain? My pets. I, I really miss my, 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 my pets of the future, as we, we call them nowadays, colloquially. Uh, my 12-legged my stretch douch, douch hand, or as, as we call them, sausage dog. I keep trying to say the word, and I can't, because I don't, I don't have a good German accent, it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Captain. Uh, Twelve-legged, you say? Twelve-legged, yes, of course. I mean, it was cruel genetically engineering this this creature to be to be resembling the stretch limousine, as as I assume we bred this sausage dog to be, uh, and then not give it the means to to carry its midsection. So I thought, um, hey, Doctor Vet person, whilst we're whilst we're creating my ideal pet here, as as we do in the future, sitting down in front of a screen, typing out all the uh, the wants of a dog. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'd like these extra legs to help it not drag its uh, its belly across the floor because I could see that really being a bit of a bit of a bit of a drag for him, if you excuse the pun. Uh, so <laughs> today we have a bit of a problem over here. Uh, we are totally out of petroleum gas, and we're starting to build up stocks of heavy light and uh, sorry, heavy and light oil, which shouldn't be a problem. But if we ever fill up all of these tanks, this refinery will completely stop. Um, because it, it can only output one of each, that's, well, one of everything at once. If it can't output the heavy or the light oil, it will not output the petroleum as a separate. <sighs> My um, plan is to make solid fuel with it. I don't know what your plan would be. <laughs> uh, well, we are uh, researching advanced oil processing, which will allow us to produce more petroleum gas using light and heavy. Oh, that sounds oh, wonderful. I believe the process is called cracking, if we have a look in our advanced research overlay that we have here. Uh, yeah, light, uh, light cracking to petroleum gas and then heavy to light. This this sounds amazing. And uh, possibly, I smell a, a assembly line. Smell That's the word. I, sm oh. I smell an assembly line. I'm, I'm there just like making hand actions trying to think of the word. <laughs> well, for the process to function, we do need water for, both, uh, for all three steps of creating uh, well more petroleum, more petroleum. Uh, thankfully I see we've got a, a lake over that way and not just that we've also got a lake over that way so we, we should be all right do we want to arrange the cracking process like we have heavy coming up over this way uh, and then we crack that to some light tanks over here and then we have double the cracking situation turning all this like double light that we've got into petroleum I, th I can definitely do that. I think that uh, works. I'm not. I'm not sure. I've not done this bit myself. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, but going back to your um, dog situation. Yeah, uh, old, old Fido. What a, what a great dog. I loved him. Uh, so, I, I I don't want to sound like a Greenpeace guy. I guess. <laughs> uh, Environmentalist on my planet. Yeah. I will not stand for. Yeah. It. <laughs> so, what are the moral implications of? creating your own pet the mo i mean i'm i'm not doing anything unnatural just giving a dog that's already been overstretched some legs i mean i honestly i think my my moral moral karma in this situation would be in the positive if you will because i've taken something that's already been messed up by humanity this extreme abomination known as a sausage dog and uh given it some some adaptationary features yes I'm still having trouble. Very altruistic of me. I understand. Overwhelming. I, I, I can get it. I also enjoy my UV birds. Your what? Yep. My UV birds. Uh, so it was discovered a long time ago that birds can both see in the UV and have uh, feathers that reflect in UV light. And now being being lowly humans, uh, sapiens as we are, we, we lack that fourth cone to enable us to see it. But thankfully, there are pigments that birds make that can layer dust all around my flat, allowing the light to be 
fluoresced, is it fluoresced? Uh, when it's absorbed by one material and let off into another um, another wavelength. Uh, and, and yeah, and my, my birds, they fly around my flat uh, free as, as all birds should be. I, I hear back in the day there was this barbaric practice of keeping birds, you know, animals that fly in the sky in tiny little cages. And I, I, I got to say my mind boggles at that, uh, at how that would actually go down. Um, how, how do you live with yourself keep, keeping such a free, free creature in such a tiny, tiny confinement? I also have, I, I think I dabbled in this subject before, but weren't they also clipping their feathers? Oh, know, horrific. Prevent, horrific, yeah. Prevent them completely from flying. I mean, I, I obviously would liken it to the times when we hobbled slaves, when you would get a, a, a person who, I, I know this is hard, who another person had ownership of, and then they would break that owned person's legs to make sure they wouldn't break uh, run away. Uh, that That's just... Barbaric, if you ask me. Barbaric. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Sorry, that one went, went off into a bit of a weird one. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how do you want me to respond? Yeah. Yes, I agree that slavery is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we agree with that. Yes, slavery is bad. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> so, yeah, cli clipping of bird wings, uh, morally wrong. <laughs> Morally wrong. If you then gave them some extra wings, I, I'm all about that. I, I think that would work out pretty well. Uh, what what would happen if you gave a bird a third pair of wings? Because obviously they already have two pairs. I don't know what would happen to the bird, but it might be mentally scarred. <laughs> well, one of the beautiful things about the, the evolved brain is that it can handle a remarkable number of inputs. There were many uh, experiments done in the early 21st century uh, where people tried to sort of connect themselves to electronic equipment is what I'm going to say but it, it's nothing quite as sophisticated as that as that they had um, little little uh, motors and stuff on them that would vibrate in a certain frequency when they were looking at certain in certain directions so they could have like a, a north sense if you will um, okay. and after about a week or so uh, people started dreaming with this north sense uh, and if you ask me, that, that, that's kind of showing quite a serious integration. Uh, and in more serious uh, conversations, there was the, uh, the original cyborg. Uh, I, I forget his name off the top of my head now, uh, but during the turn of the millennium of the 2000s, in that ancient past, uh, there was actually a man who was colorblind and he had a device strapped to his head that would emit a tone like literally a, depending on the different colors he was looking at uh, and the primary colors were like the harmonic sequence and it all kind of worked up from there um, and he was allowed to have it on his identification papers for for leaving the country um, and thus he was officially dubbed a cyborg uh, which i think is just one of the most amazing things for such a backwards culture to come up with I, I do doubt he didn't have resistance in the way of what, what he wanted to do. Oh, I'm sure the uh, the legal and social systems of the time were just not ready for such wild declarations. But that's that's humanity right there. That is humanity. Quite often we are not prepared for the situations we find ourselves in. This is <laughs> this is why I don't like pipes. Ah, oh, they're all right. Look at that, perfect. I've got I've got a lot of underground pipes on me. I could like swap these. At, well, no, I can't do that quite yet. I could do like that, and then you can run through. <laughs> yeah, but this one's no good. <laughs> yeah, but why isn't it going? And this got zeros across the board, but oh yeah, that whatever you did there did it. Uh, uh ooh. oh, bad, bad. <laughs> Let me just rip up all these pipes oh, and put them back. <laughs> Sorry, right. I'll, I'll be okay. done in a second. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Everything is e fine. Everything will work out. It's okay, nothing to worry about here. <laughs> Move along, citizens. So, Captain, how is your dog? My dog, unfortunately, my dog passed away many years ago. Um, some say that I disappeared one day to, uh, to make a delivery. Uh, and he waited for me outside the office where I would normally pick up my deliveries. And unfortunately, 
What do you know? I crashed that spaceship as well. No, no, I mean, the systems failed on that spaceship as well, uh, stranding me for many years on another horrific desert planet. I, I, this, I'm not, I'm not, this is not my first rodeo on abandonation. Uh, <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, he passed away waiting for me. Uh, some say even to this day, his spirit can be seen sat outside the uh, the pizza parlor that I worked at, uh, waiting for me. It's very sad. Very sad. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Like the time you, like the time you t traveled back through time so to save the humanity from a crisis of material war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I. Uh, not just an international man of uh, of mystery. I am an interdimensional man of mystery. Interdimensional. <laughs> interdimensional. Timey wimey stuff. I yeah, guess. you you heard me. I, I mean, heard you. T Tardis is like you know for the, for the for the newbies. We don't need this storage anymore, do we? Actually. No, we could do with pumping it through this set of pipes here. Which I might go ahead and do. Just don't mix and match liquids. I, I will try my best. We don't need this for us, right? I no. Mean, no, I mean, it's nice to have it on the corners there, but like when it's in our way, it's in our way. Yeah. Okay, and I want to come down One about does here. not simply stand in the, the, in the way of progress. <laughs> no, what, one simply does not stand in the way of progress, it is true. And it flows. All right, and nice. Uh, we do need more refineries. More of these actual refineries. Yes. Do we have a machine for it? No. No. Because oh, it's well, it can't. Of... It's too many for what we can make. There's yeah. F there's five things there. Okay. Well, I guess I'll go get some stone brick and make. Uh, what What do we reckon? Four, five, ten, twelve refineries. Uh, I think. Um... Two more would be enough. Two more. All right. I I will work on making two more refineries. So after my my uh, sausage dog Fido, uh, I I thought it'd probably be best, given my uh, mythical nature of negligence, that maybe I should get a robot dog because I I hear they're a little bit more hardy. Uh, if you forget to feed them, they only uh, lodge a complaint to the master server as opposed to kill, keeling over and dying, which sounds like the sort of thing that I could deal with. Uh, so I I got my my next dog Spot. And uh, he, he turned out to be all right. He would fetch me my, my morning RSS feed. Uh, he would go and uh, scare, off the, scare off the local neighborhood children, which I, I fully approved of. I, whoever put that into the robot dog programming, mwah, genius. <laughs> uh, Captain, honestly, I think that if somebody gave you a pet that contained a, a power source of a neutron star, it would still die of hunger. Unfortunately, it did kind of freeze up after a little while. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so I, I'm I'm told we're supposed to maintain their legs. Now, no no one actually said this to me when I was buying the product, uh, the puppy. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, technically, it is a product. It is a product, indeed. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't know I needed to maintain him. All the instructions were in Esperanto, and, and I don't speak ancient languages anymore. All I do is study the uh, the hieroglyphics known as Dovahkin language, and uh, that that that's a real real deep deep thing there uh, that, that that requires all of my study. So I, I don't have time for for useless languages that never got used. Okay, Captain. So so you just ignored. I didn't ignore it. I, I took him for baths. I went to the beach with him. Uh, we went to the, the dump. All, all things I thought mechanical dogs would like. Turns out all of them induced rust. I, I mean, I, I don't know. what. So you took him for baths, a mechanical dog. That I'm guessing he had some type of waterproofing, but not that much. I might, uh, yeah, I mean, the, he, he had these weird rubbery things around his, his like leg joints and stuff. They looked like he, they were slowing him down, so I took them out. Uh, I, I, he seemed happy. He could definitely bound around faster than he than he did before that. So, okay, and so when the dog's legs stopped functioning, what did you do? <laughs> well, I took him to the robo vet, of course. What would you do with your robot pet that that stopped working? Uh, I, I, you got me there. <laughs> so, and let me say that was more expensive than getting my kidney replaced. Uh Okay. <laughs> so why did you get your kidney replaced? 
Oh, this this was back in my younger years. Uh, there, there was this new uh, new new chemical stimulant on the market that was uh, big amongst all the the, the trainee pilots. Uh, did I mention they made us work forty eight hour days? It was ridiculous. We had to get right right close to a black hole and get the time dilation all kicking up, just so we had the time to fit in the study. But anyway, one one of the things we tried to do uh, instead of that was uh, it was actually called dilation, which I thought was a great name for for a a stimulant. Uh, it, it totally slowed, di slowed down time for us. Well, we felt like time slowed down, but obviously relativity being what it was, we actually sped up. And yeah, it destroyed my destroyed my kidney. Small price to pay Wait, for the uh, graduation off to, to the captain's school. I I'm not sure that <laughs> black holes work like that. <laughs> Well, the one they had in the training center works. We 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 uh, made a they sorry made a Krugelblitz, the the one made out of uh, lasers. They they pumped enough energy into a small space uh, using lasers, uh, and obviously equal MC squared being what it what it is, that energy had enough gravitational mass to form a small black hole, which we then uh, powered our time dilation effects upon. It was massively energy inefficient, but it worked for our our purposes. Yeah, but wouldn't being in pro close proximity to a black hole actually speed up everyone else? <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> no, I don't know how they <laughs> Yeah, yeah, normal black holes would do that, but obviously this this was a special anti-black hole made made by Central Command for for us pilots to uh, thus captains to use pilots. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, ne I nearly mistook myself for a lowly pilot. <laughs> well, I, I presume that having a, uh, I I don't know. A, well, if a black hole is a concentration of mass and energy, oh, well, mass and energy. Uh, yeah, uh, of, uh, of stuff. Uh, of stuff in a well, very dense. <laughs> very dense is an understatement. <laughs> yes, I I like the term very dense. Though we will go for it. Many people have referred to me as black hole. <laughs> what in dark dark energy be then the reverse of a black hole? Ooh, I'm getting into philosophy now. Uh, yeah, maybe. That actually is an interesting statement. Yeah. It is dark energy, the opposite of mass. It's not hmm. as the opposite, but... But it uh, has an opposite effect on space-time. Yeah, so could you have a dark energy hole? I, uh, you know what, that is a very, very intriguing, because it, uh, it uh, contains energy. So there's no no reason that you shouldn't be able to get enough of it in one place to twist the fabric of space time up in a funny way. So basically, if you just imagine the space time as a flat surface, and every massive object basically bends it as we want to imagine it downwards. Yes. Because. Yes. So having something that repels gravity, as it's for uh, again. Uh, uh, going into a subject they have no idea. <laughs> <They're nothing. laughs> Sorry, we we can throw out broad statements about subjects we don't know about. Let's let's carry on like this. <laughs> the following content does not contain any materials that have been ever proven by humanity. Uh, yes, citation <laughs> very this. much needed. <laughs> Please take this with a large grain of salt. <laughs> you can then possibly have a uh, area reverse, well, emitting, pushing away matter yeah uh, uh, going back to the rubber sheet analogy it would be like lifting it up rather than pushing yes. it down have we just solved the way to open the einstein rosen bridge imagine just uh, the wormhole analogy where you could have a piece of paper that you can bend and then poke a hole through yep. to the other side and technically travel faster than light because the light will go around the long way yes I if you do have that bend and you have on one side it pushing the opposite way of the black hole but yeah we are we are getting on to, to realms that i'm not sure of. <laughs> yeah oh man we never get to see our hair our I, hair yeah yeah so i just took my <laughs> armor off to have a look because <laughs> obviously hairy black holes pushed me onto this uh <laughs> Uh, uh, that, that actually is a thing in physics. It's all about whether the information can get in or out. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I was just wondering, like, we never get to see our, our dude's hair. I, I spent a lot of money back on, um, <laughs> on Lyrie getting my hair sorted. And, and uh, then all we do is cover it up with hard hats. I mean, it's a bit weird. Oh, got a little close there. It's a bit weird. <laughs> well, it is for protection, I guess. 
I, this is why I got a bowl cut on my hair so that it could uh, <laughs> pu push away any incoming incoming problems. It uh, looks we, like yeah, this never actually backs up beyond the uh, the splitter here, yeah. which which is all right. We, we are making exactly what we eat with the red. Uh, red the, circuits. Bit, uh, well, the, the thing is, I think we are now producing enough. Uh, I'm not sure if we are actually producing enough uh, petroleum gas. Shall we go and have a look? May maybe talk through what we've just done. As, uh, we kind of did that whilst talking about poor, poor Fido and Spot. So we moved the refinery from o all the way over the right here to the left here. So that's nice. Um, it just about producing enough petroleum. Then we pump all the heavy oil into this load of uh, chemical plants, which produce the light oil for us. Then all the light oil from the refinery and the cracking go into this line of uh, chemical factories, which then produce go from light oil down to petroleum, which we're then pumping away off into our chemical storage for plastics and stuff over here. But yeah, we definitely need to uh, expand all this lot out. But yeah, there we go. That's that, that's all we've done. That's uh, that's good work. Hey, we we are building up numbers here in the in the gas tank, in the petroleum gas tank. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's only just breaking 300 every now and then, but it's definitely on its way up rather than on its way down. Uh, it's a pump. Bigger numbers, nice. Bigger numbers, but at least the pipes should be getting empty. Yeah, the pipes are getting empty. Yeah, the logic gate's sorely underutilized in our playthrough. <laughs> If you click on the pump, you can see at the bottom there's this bit called Enabled Condition. Uh, you yeah. need to set something in there. So at the moment, it's going to be equal to zero. So if I set it, just nothing's equal to zero. It should run or something equal to zero. Let's, uh, let's put a red in. So because we're not pumping any signal in, I've told it to watch out for any signal that equals zero. Now, all, sig uh, all signals equal zero at the moment, so this can turn on. Um, if we used something like a decider combinator, we could use it to read the, va the volume of the pumps, and then when that ha gets below a certain level, tell it to get going again. So can we use... Uh, we can attach a wire to... I know that we can attach a wire to... The tank. Yeah, and say if it reaches zero, fire up the alarm? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we need one more thing. What is it? It's it's a... I think it, I think it is a decider combinator. There we go, I'm going to make one of those. Go from that one to this one. On the storage tank, the only mode of operation you have is read contents. That then sends okay. the like the amount of uh, petrol in there along the wire to the decider combinator. If I remember correctly, because we've got petroleum gas, we select the petroleum gas in the big empty box. Okay. Uh, and then we want to have this less than or equal to, uh, let's pick a number. Zero? Uh, I'm gonna go five rather than zero, just so we get a little bit of pre-warning. Uh, well, and it does. Con it can contain a lot more than seventeen thousand. It can contain so. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, one hundred equals. No, no. Oh. I need to have that on a one. <laughs> There we go. So the alarm works. Yay. So when this drops below a certain amount of gas, this will output a red signal of one, which should turn on the the alarm. But it's not. Um, Still not. Maybe that's the output. Let's let's try that. <laughs> there. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, I got it working. <laughs> oh, this is a bad combination <laughs> because. When the alarm signal starts, it turns off the pipe. <laughs> Aha! All right. Well, how do we get rid of that? Do we have to break that? I don't know. Uh, I broke it. Up. All right. Well, the, the the logic is there. We just now need to put it back into place. <laughs> okay. So we need more fuel, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a horn that's gonna constantly be annoying us until we fix the fuel situation. Brilliant. Okay. Well, there we go. I think I think I think we've got everything all sorted now looking pretty good i'll go and <laughs> go and see how much is uh backing up in the tank yeah we're at 300 that's enough to turn this back on <laughs> but i think science off so we have totally knocked it out of the park today we've expanded our oil we've got our plastic soid we've talked about my dear dear bed dead pats um i think we will see <sighs> i think we'll see great progress next time uh we, we, we're getting very close to getting 
so, some very important things on the go, like robots and nuclear power and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> but with that, gonna... yeah, the, the robots are going to help us, knowing. But yes, with yeah. that, Captain's Log, signing off.